Everybody take their seats, please. We'll begin momentarily. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Hey, Mr. Mayor. I'm Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. How are you? So, Carol, are you going to take care of this? Yeah. Uh? Okay. I call the uh, meeting to order. This is the uh, regular city council meeting for the city of Woodland Park for Thursday, March the 21st. And I'll turn to Cindy for a roll call. Thank you. Mayor Turley. Present. Gary Brevetto. Here. Bob Carlson. Terry Harrison. Here. Carol Harvey. Here. John Schaefer. Here. Eric Smith. Here. Thank please, you. please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Not too big of a crowd tonight, but good to see everybody that's here. Probably means we have a pretty light agenda, and that can sometimes be a good thing. But we still got a few important things to do, too. And for the first of those, under ceremonies, presentations, and appointments, item four, I'll turn to our city clerk, Cindy Morris. Thank you. Um, to update the viewing audience and those that are here, the first item is to consider appointment uh, to the com Council's Community Investment Review Committee. Um, and currently there is one vacant position on this committee, and that position is for a member of an eligible requesting organization. Uh, we've been advertising for this position for a number of weeks and have recently received two applications from eligible requesting organizations. Both applicants are here this evening. First, let me introduce Bruce Caldwell, who represents the storehouse, Woodland Park Community Church's food pantry and other programs. And second, Carolyn Smith, who represents the Youth Pass Symphony Guild. Very good. The term of service for this vacant position will expire on January 1st of 2015. Um, you have copies of their applications uh, as addendums to your packet. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm sure they would be happy to answer any questions you may have. And I have prepared paper ballots. Okay. And um, so maybe what I'll do is, is invite each of you to come up and uh, come to the podium, state your name and address, and um, you know, tell us why you would like to serve on this, and we'll see if uh, the council members have any questions for you. And um, so let's start with uh, Carolyn. Oh, I'm still a gentleman. I'll go ladies first. <laughs> My name is Carolyn Smith. I live at 114 Parkview Drive. And I was asked to send in an application by a friend of mine who's on the committee. The Symphony Guild has been a long time recipient, probably, I guess, every year since um, the committee <coughs> was formed, which we, of course, appreciate. So does anyone have any questions? Any questions for Carolyn? Or do you want to wait until after um, Bruce. Bruce, Bruce speaks and then ask questions of both or either? Are we can only choose one? Yes, you can we only choose one. Oh. I know, that's <laughs> the same way. I, 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 <laughs> but we have other things that people can participate can, in. Can we increase the number of people in that committee? <laughs> I don't I think, think we. What do you think? I mean, that's by acclamation, right? We could do that easily. No, let's don't do that. Hey, David, uh, yeah. Mayor, if we could, uh, go ahead and have Carolyn explain what the Symphony Guild actually does for sure. our viewing audience. I'm sorry, you said what the Symphony Guild actually does? Yeah. Okay. The main uh, project, and this will be our 33rd um, this year, is we bring the Colorado Springs Philharmonic to Woodland Park for a concert. Um, we, let's see, about two years ago, we went to a different type of uh, staging facility. So 
it costs quite a bit to do this, but it is, um, it's an event that's enjoyed by many, many people. We had some issues last year, as many of you know, but the year before that was probably really a banner year for us, um, probably five, 6,000 people come to the concert. The other thing we do is we pay for um, every fourth grader in uh, Teller County to go down to one of two uh, performances that are done strictly for kids. They're done by the Colorado Springs Philharmonic. That includes, um, you know, Gateway, Summit, Columbine, Colorado Springs Christian School, and any homeschool students. That's what we do. Okay. Hmm. Uh, my name is Bruce Caldwell, and I'm one of the pastors at Woodland Park Community Church. And one of our ministries is at, at the church is called the uh, the Storehouse, and we take uh, a certain percentage of all the money that comes into the church and designate it for uh, for the storehouse. And there are several arms of the storehouse. There's um, we help uh, people with financial assistance, uh, rent, utilities, um, that type of food, that type of thing. Uh, we have a cars ministry where we um, help we do repairs, minor repairs on people's uh, cars. We have a, we call it the I Am Second truck. It's basically a kind of a revised, uh, remodeled U-Haul truck that we allow people in the community to use for, uh, for local moves. Um, we have a transitional housing program that we're um, in the, our second year of uh, do, of doing, and we have uh, we have a counseling uh, ministry. We have a firewood ministry where we distribute firewood to people in the community. So basically, it's just providing assistance to local local people in a number number of areas. And uh, we also we've been recipients of some of the funding uh, for the last at least I think this is our third year, and so. Basically, to answer the question why, uh, I was asked to per, uh, consider this position, and uh, the basic reason why is I've seen how it benefits, you know, many, many groups in the community, and uh, so I just am willing to be a part of that, to serve and to help and to uh, be available in whatever way I can to make sure that gets, you know, that continues. and. We really appreciate, as I'm sure she does as well, and the other agencies too. We just really appreciate being a part of a community that um, does this to really get help into the hands of people that need it. So. Thank you. And, and Cindy, maybe you can uh, review for us. I'm sure you probably have it there. Um, what is the makeup of the um, this uh, investment board? The makeup is one person from the city staff either the city clerk or the city finance director or a, someone designated by the city manager. Um, two citizens at large don't necessarily need to be city residents. And then um, two um, representatives from qualifying organizations or eligible organizations. And then um, someone from city council. Right. Okay. Any questions for uh, either of our candidates? <clears throat> well, you know, and it's Bruce, isn't it? Correct. And, and I know it's wonderful to go to Symphony Above the Clouds, and it does bring in boodles and boodles of people. I don't know if we've ever been able to count them, and, and I'm sure it's an impact. But one thing I thought was in, interesting that I didn't know, Bruce, uh, and so I'll give you – I'll get you a little chance here to, uh, to praise – uh, what the pantry does. How many pounds of food did you guys distribute last year? Well, <clears throat> just to clarify, we, the storehouse, what we do, we, we partner with the food pantry in terms of f we provide financial assistance and we provide volunteer helper, but helpers. But the food pantry is actually run out of the little chapel yeah. in Divide. And so, <clears throat> but so we're not, you know, we're, we participate with them, but we're not we're Lord not them, okay. but so. But to answer that question, I don't know. <laughs> but it's a bunch. I know they have. Uh, um, it seems like hundreds of people every time they come over there, and and I know uh, they. I think it uh, around Thanksgiving. I think they gave out 500 turkeys or something like that. So it's a it's a it's a significant outreach there. But I don't 
have the those exact figures. Yeah, I had forgotten what it was. I got the pleasure, along with with uh, our city manager David, to attend the dinner, and and if I remember correctly, it was a rather large number of or a whole lot of weight. Maybe it was taken up in canned goods. I'm not yeah. real sure. Yeah, I think they anyway. measured a lot of times in pounds. It's it's in the thousands, definitely. You know, so. And going back to you know Gary's comment, one of the things to keep in mind is what when the, the panel um, the committee was created was to cr try to keep sort of a balance and not have too many from one area and too many from another. Um, and and like, even like tonight, we're not here to evaluate how well they have performed as as uh, nonprofits, but we're here to actually decide who would be a good person to serve on this committee to decide where all that money goes. As it spread across the community. Other questions, <coughs> John? Please. I have uh, known Bruce for a number of years. Uh, he was active with Habitat, had been in the past, officiated at several dedications. His church is certainly a strong supporter of Habitat for Humanity. Uh, so I've gotten to know Bruce as well as his partner over there, Kirk Green Street, and. Quite a few volunteers have come from that church to help Habitat, so uh, yeah. I strongly recommend Bruce. Other position. comments or discussion from Council? Yes, Carol. Uh, Cindy, what other openings do we have? Well, currently we're looking for folks um, for the Board of Adjustment. Sally, I think we still need some Planning Commission folks, um, and I don't know that we're totally full on Parks Advisory Board. <laughs> those three have we filled Dean Waters position on utilities advisory committee I think uh, I think we are going to okay. and that will create an opening in an alternate position I don't think we've made that switch yet That's and correct. just as we're talking about that on the utilities um, that committee uh, since Eric and I both are on it we have two members on that um, the alternates are really fully engaged really throughout and, and I mean the only, the only way they're an alternate is when it comes to voting on something. Other than that, they're all pretty much full members on, on utilities. Because it get, you almost have to because it's so technical and trying to understand it. You, you just can't come to one meeting and know what's going on. You, you really have to be a full, pretty much a full-time part of it. The only other thing I wanted to say is we, we jokingly said that you know we have other openings and and very sincerely we do have other yeah. openings and since we'll only be able to select one of you tonight and both applications were just wonderful um, I always like to put in a plug for the Planning Commission it is a, a great organization to get involved in in this community it is I thank, agree. thank you both though for applying and I'll just say that and I've said it before for people who have heard me and the and the better folks that we have and on the Planning Commission the more thorough and complete job that they do makes our job as city council members uh, much easier and straightforward. <laughs> and it, it's, a, it's really good to have those uh, uh, additional inputs. So different people have different interests, but it's really uh, a very good thing. And, and I will, I served on the Board of Adjustment, and that's very important too when there's uh, issues that uh, are appealed to that quasi-judicial board. So. Um, any other questions for our applicants? Um, yeah, let's. What we'll do? It's a public vote, but we'll actually write down our vote, and then Cindy will read them. And that way, what one person said won't necessarily influence the other. And um, yeah, we assume we have a pen. But it's off public record. The names aren't already written there, except for ours. Congratulations, Bruce. And, and uh, Carolyn, thank you very much for applying. And, and I really do hope you'll consider one of those um, maybe serving us in another position. I mean, they're, they're all so important. And, 
And this is important to him. And, you know, we, we greatly appreciate the work of uh, the uh, Symphony Guild. It's a great event. And it's uh, one of our cornerstone events in Woodland Park, for sure. Uh, Councilman Harrison just reminded me we will have a council position opening in about two weeks. In June. No, in, at the end of June. <laughs> this is true, too. So um, do you administer? Um, I will. I'll administer the oath next time. Oh, next time, not tonight. Yes. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for coming, and thanks for applying. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's what makes Woodland Park a great community is, is having great <laughs> citizens and stepping up to do things for our community. I got to tell you, uh, so with that, I'll move on to uh, item six, which is the consent calendar. And for that, I'll turn to Cindy Morris, our city clerk also. Thank you. Uh, four items this evening for your consideration. First one is the March 7th minutes from the regular council meeting. Second is the February statement of expenditures. And then we have two liquor license renewals. The first is from Safeway. And the second is from Japanese Fusion, uh, doing business as Fusion Japan. Um, and both liquor license renewals um, are eligible for renewal. What questions may I answer? Motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. I have a motion, a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Bravetto? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Harvey? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Smith? Yes. Turley? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we have no unfinished business. We have no ordinances on initial posting. We have no public <laughs> hearings. And, but we do have a couple of new business items. And for that, I'm going to turn to our Director of Utilities, <coughs> Kip Wiley. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to intercede before Kip begins the but, reconciliation. In that case, I'm going to turn to our City Manager, David Buttery. Thank you. Uh, Council, for, for many of you, this is the first time that you've gone through a water tap management plan reconciliation. Much like there was an opportunity to learn about the budget, because it's a complicated document, the reconciliation is just, it's been referred to as the spreadsheet from hell, and I, I believe it is. Uh, Kip is going to take some time this evening to walk you through this so that you're oriented to this and you can then understand it. Don't let it, uh, it's, it's daunting. Don't let it scare you, though. He's going to take care of you and walk you through that. Cindy's going to hand you a copy that's a little bit easier to read than what you might have on your iPad. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to Kip. Thank you, David. Good evening, Council. Um, I'll let Cindy hand it out for a second. The, uh, um, I'd like to present the, uh, the 2012 Water Tap Management Plan Reconciliation. Um, this is a great planning yes. tool that allows us to uh, plan for uh, expenses and assess uh, tap fees. Um, before we get started, the uh, um, kind of the bottom line up front, um, we would like to recommend no change in tap, in tap fees. And it'll continue from 2009 rates to 2013 rates, the same rate. Um, if, you, if you look at the spreadsheet, I'd like to just point your attention to the, the dashed line going through the middle of the spreadsheet below uh, the year 2012. Everything above that dashed line is actual numbers. Everything below is projections. Um, and then I'd like to start by just going by going through the year 2012, so everything above the dashed line. Um, first, it just breaks it down into available taps in column B, and then moving further to the right, column C is uh, single-family taps sold. Keep going further to the right to, to the next column is uh, multifamily and commercial taps sold. Um, next column you have a total, and then proceeding you have. Um, taps connected, average tap fees, and then column F, tap fee revenue. And the tap fee revenue um, is basically um, that revenue um, divided by the number of new taps sold gives you the average tap fee in column E. Then moving to uh, column F, you have water development fees. If any are paid in the year, we had a, uh, a good year in water development fees. This was due to the uh, sanctuary project. <clears throat> um, going forward from there, um, column G is the, the revenue per tap. And um, 
I just want to stop there and make it a note in 2013, so just below that, um, it increased 1.46%. So rates will go up 1.46% starting April 1st, and that is 75% of the CPIU, which is an annual adjustment that occurs. Um, moving back to 2012 in column H, those are, that number is uh, revenue from water sales. And um, if you move to uh, column J, which is two columns to the right, um, that is revenue for capital water fees. Um, if you would just move down the line a little bit further to uh, column M, um, this is our debt service and um, two additional sheets that are attached to this spreadsheet. One is the debt service and it is the schedule for when loans will be paid off and the reoccurring debt that is paid. And when you get back to column O, that is, that is the total capital cost, so the, the debt service plus any other capital expenses for the year. Um, continuing to column P, the annual balance in 2012, um, our annual balance uh, uh, increased. Last year we were projected to be uh, $14,000 um, in, in the minus, and we ended up having a very good year, and that was due to tap sales and additional water sales. And then going further to the right in column Q is the overall <coughs> cumulative balance. Um, I wanted to kind of stop there and ask any questions in regards to uh, the water <coughs> year for 2012. Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to jump to 2015. How do we go from, uh, uh, well, it goes down 835 that because you sold, you're planning on selling so many taps. So it goes from 1006, column B, 1006 to 835. Is that because you're selling so many taps? So that's a lot of taps. But you're, you're, what's your question again? Well, you said single family uh, residential taps available. Right. In 2012, it says 1006. Correct. 2013 says 835, so it went down. Yes, Available we... Available went down. Yes, sir. Why? We, uh, we removed 150 taps from the single-family bank into the multifamily oh. bank. Okay. You did. We did. Yeah. yeah. Then, it went, then it goes up in 2015. It goes up um, as we develop more water, more taps become available. So you're assuming that if, if you develop more water, and if it doesn't happen, it's not going to be 1,016 then. Correct. If we don't develop the water, right. the tabs won't go up, but that is in the plan to develop more lo water locally. Would so, uh, the availability of water obviously have something to do with that? Availability of water? Yes. Um, that, that always plays an overall So if we role. have droughts for three or four years, uh, we're not going to have the available water to do 1,016 tabs, right? Um, it's a yes and a no answer. It's, as Sorry, we no develop more change. water, more tabs become available. Mm -hmm. Um, however, with augmentation supply, if we can't supply the water that we legally consume and have to replace, then therefore the taps wouldn't be available. Okay. So, so we're not going to, I mean, when you get right down to it, I mean, this is the projection, tap management yeah. plan and all that, but until you really get to where those taps are going to be used mm -hmm. and you look at what your water situation is and, and we'll decide. And, and, and I was just thinking while we were going through that. and. And David, you you probably you probably remember because you have better memory than me sometimes, often. <laughs> um, the what we have in, in in utilities in the kind of the short term and long range plans, um, we go through that in utilities advisory committee. Has council been briefed on that recently? No. It might be that something. Yeah, we might want to do that <laughs> sometime. Just uh, maybe even in, when we're going through goals and objectives. As we uh, quickly go absolutely, that. as we have the audit discussion that will lead into the goals and objectives, one of the things we will talk about is the the long term capital plans. We did uh, some adjustments just uh, recently. The UAC saw those right. those adjustments, and we'll be happy to discuss those during that process. Yeah, because it might be good for them to kind of get a little bit of a feeling of um, what it's going to take to do some of these, where we stand on uh, eventual local reservoir, and 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 where that fits into the picture of of uh, our utilities and and the cost that you know that, that that would bring forth to us and and that fits in some of when you look at balances and things it's you know it says you go into have to go into debt to do some of those things be good for council to get a perspective um, on all of that for our utilities 
I, I think I just want to make a comment, and Kip, you can, or David, clarify here if I make a mistake. But, um, I mean, Gary, in response to your question, we have <laughs> plenty of wet water in, in, in our uh, available for the community to grow uh, in the near term. And the one limiting factor as it relates to drought is augmentation water. And that comes from Twin Lakes. Mm -hmm. um, so, but even that, we still have a fairly substantial amount, even with the uh, conditions as they are now, uh, to make it through uh, this year um, as in, in, in years to come. So it's not that we're running out of water. And I think that's something that uh, Steve or somebody used to make uh, that point when we have, whenever we got into this discussion, because we don't want people to think that we're running short on water. And actually, we'll continue that discussion in the next agenda item because we're going to talk water restrictions as well. And, and just to add to that, he, Eric's absolutely right. But rest assured, and we've said this before, when you get into drought conditions, we monitored this closely all the time. And, you know, as you see changes, because, you know, it can be a cumulative effect as you have drought from year to year to year. And, and so you may have to make some uh, different change, you know, make changes as you go along, but we, we, you know, that's Kip and, and the folks work that real hard and stay on top of that as well as the Utilities Advisory Committee. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll continue with the spreadsheet, um, starting with uh, the uh, next year, uh, or this year, 2013. Um, there's a couple things I'd like to point out in, in column G, which I mentioned earlier, that included the 1.46 rate increase. Um, <clears throat> and as you go, as you keep going across, you will see the, the in column P, the second to the end, um, the annual balance um, of, uh, of $14,883. The uh, water fund has proven to uh, do better than that every year, and um, I, I believe by the end of this year that number will um, be uh, larger. Um, Um, that um, annual balance is that that's revenue minus expenses and the 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 annual balance yeah. is it's everything it includes um, debt service and capital expenses and it takes into account the operational costs and the water sales revenues with water capital revenue so it's like everything everything <laughs> yes um, other things to point out um, after um, 2014, in column E, um, tap sales will increase 5% a year. Um, so this, in this projection, we have tap fees staying the same next year as well. Other, other things to point out are um, in 2017, there is a 13.7% rate uh, decrease. And um, let me see, what, there was one more. Kip, I lost what column you're referring to now. Yeah, that was in column G. Okay. And that's footnote four at the bottom. Yep. So 2017 column G, it's 444 four, four, there, right there. You'll see the year before, up one, up one row was 535. The decrease there is due to the 13.7% decrease in rates. <coughs> um, and then also in, in tap sales, you'll see where we increase tap sales when more water is developed every year, or on those years when water is developed. You'll see tap, no. tap available taps increase. That, that cumulative balance, the last column there, mm -hmm. if you go on like the year 2030 here, that's pretty impressive, $4,605,000. If you have that much money, what do you do with it? I'd spend Lower it. rates. <laughs> hmm? Lower rates or pay more, buy more water? Um, improve your system. Um, you can see uh, in um, column P over the years 2011, I'm sorry, column N in capital expenses, 2011 and 2012 capital expenses are very small. So we have cut capital expenses to cover our debt service these years <laughs> until that debt service goes away in 2015. Um, 85 percent of that debt service will go away at that time. We can pay back um, the wastewater loan that we took out and uh, move forward with capital projects. 
I'd like to interject something very quickly because I don't want the council nor the listening audience to think that at 2030 we're going to have a 4.6 million dollar <laughs> balance because the key variable associated with this is I think in column um, C1 mm -hmm. new SFR taps if you look at the trend it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride beginning in 2001 peaked at 90 dropped all the way down to 4 in 2010 <coughs> once we get past the dash line that becomes a prognostication and Kip is running for me uh, new SFR taps with numbers that aren't quite as aggressive or as optimistic whichever way you might want to look at that when you reduce those numbers even by a small amount it has a huge impact on that cumulative balance we're working on another uh, initiative to bring to council as it relates to some other components of water fee structures and we will certainly roll those thoughts into that but your question's a good one if the balance were that large there would be many other things that we could accomplish with the water system Kip um, in, in just following up on kind of what Gary's talking about and looking at that now where we have in the long-range plan looking to maybe for the requirement for a, lo a local reservoir um, is that included is that worked into this yes sir in uh, the attached spreadsheet under uh, uh. water capital expenditures you will see in 2018 a down payment for a water reservoir of um, one million two hundred forty five thousand dollars <coughs> So in year 2018, um, in the capital expenditures a spreadsheet. So we would we would pay cash and then also finance right. 6.5 million dollars. And so you know when we get out that far in advance, we're I mean these are really best projections that one can make. Correct. Yep. They're 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 projections you can see in the spreadsheet. How, um, like David said, tap fees go up to, or single family taps sold go up to 45 taps in 2018. Any other questions on the reconciliation? What, what is the basis for the forecast now, 2014 and beyond? 2014 and beyond? Yeah. What, what do these numbers represent, or how did you arrive at those forecasts for single and uh, multi-family units? The, for tap sales? Yeah. They're just they're projections. Um, like like David said, we are reevaluating what we think might be an actual or a closer um, number of tap sales due to the recent uh, slowdown of tap sales. Okay, where, where does a project like Trail Ridge then show up in these forecasts? Trail Ridge would show up under column C2, and as we have a one there now, if Trail Ridge came through, that would be an additional 168 units. Yeah, which would seem to have a big influence on the outcome of that. Yes, it is. Um, also, in this approach, um, we, we kind of believe you don't you don't count your chickens. Um, it was the same thing um, as last year in regards to the sanctuary being built. Um, it's just large-scale projects you can't necessarily count on you have to plan so the, uh, the 168 isn't in here at all now is that what I'm hearing no sir okay hmm. all right I, we David and I have been running numbers to uh, assess if it did come through and what what that means for um, the water fund that's kind of the reason you know, when we talk about that you make your best projections that you can and as things come to fruition and you're approving things you got to look at that all really closely on where we're at and from a realistic point of view I don't right. want to say you plan for worst case but in a sense you have to be ready for worst case yeah no I noticed your uh, parenthetical or your quotes in there on the, <laughs> on the chickens <laughs> but uh, okay well these uh, these units then ought to come online pretty quickly and according to the way uh, 
they're going to be built sort of all at once. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but uh, yeah. So over what period of time, Eric, would you expect for those units to be completed? I mean, I, I guess, you don't have to. <laughs> John, if, I, I'll tell you what, well, afterwards, why don't we talk? And it's just, right. it's not, the, I just don't okay. want to necessarily, yeah. they're not really tied together. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I'm not dodging your question. I'm happy to answer your question off that. All right. And again, our recommendation is no change in um, TAP fees for 2013. So if there are no other questions, I... Any other questions from council? I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the reconciliation of the 2012 water tap management plan <coughs> and uh, and the fees uh, as established second I have a motion a second any further discussion is Hearing this is this done once a year yes, sir. Yep. Okay. yes. at about this time yes sir. okay hearing no other discussion we'll take a vote thank you Harrison yes Harvey? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Smith? Yes. Turley? Yes. Rivetto? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> and, and John, just going back, I mean, it's one of those things you get to learn. I mean, with the water thing, you know, it's um, it, it's just kind of a, a balancing act that you do as you go along. You make your best projections and, and, and smart best projections, but then go from there. And that's the reason things have to be approved as we go along because um, we just the, the thing that we can't control is mother nature and the water and we just have to work within those boundaries if if it goes the wrong way okay moving on to item B uh, resolution number 752 implementing the city's what level one watering restrictions and for that we're going to turn to Kip again thank you sir um, resolution resolution <coughs> 752 is um, looking at implementing level one water restrictions. Um, first, I'll do an overview of our system. Um, you've seen you've seen this before. Just kind of a recap. Then uh, go over current conditions, being snowpack and local conditions. Then um, reviewing what water restrictions level one means. Um, staff's recommendation and um, overall why we're here is you may, you have the authority to implement. The restrictions. Um, I'll start with a system overview. Uh, the first slide here just shows our kind of where everything's at. Twin Lakes, where our augmentation water is. Um, moving down the Homestake pipeline, uh, you'll see the uh, big red barn out in Divide. And then that's the Twin Rocks pump station. Um, then continuing on, you'll see a little black box where our, uh, pump, our pump station is that pumps it to our local reservoir in Lloyd Gulch. As you move up Lloyd Gulch, um, we have local sources in Lloyd Gulch as well as in the North Wellfield, and also more augmentation water in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, uh, Lake Henry and Lake Meredith, which are east of Pueblo. Um, this next slide um, I, I want to show you because this is where we get our augmentation water um, from the area in yellow, the Colorado Basin, Colorado River Basin, excuse me and the green area, the Arkansas River Basin. 90% uh, of our augmentation water comes from the Colorado River Basin, and the, uh, the remaining 10% of the augmentation water comes from the Arkansas Basin. And as you're aware, um, our wastewater treatment plant discharges to the South Platte Basin, which is the red portion. Uh, this map um, is, is going over current conditions. Um, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner there is two asterisks um, next to the uh, tan in the red highlighted areas for D2 and D3. Those are uh, severe to extreme drought areas, and um, we are in those areas. This is uh, the drought monitor is, is a projection now to three to six months out, um, short term. Long term is greater than six months. And uh, you can't really tell. Um, <coughs> however, uh, there, there's, no, there's no 
S or L, which is short term or long term in the vicinity. So I, I, I would say it was a, a good estimate for the next six, three to six months. You can expect these conditions. That is uh, average temperatures and average to below average precipitation. Um, this graph um, represents uh, our augmentation water in the snowpack um, up in Leadville. The, uh, the lines on the graph represent time compared to uh, snow water equivalents um, in inches. So the, the amount of water that's in the snow. I'd like to direct your attention to the uh, dark blue line. Um, it moves halfway across the screen. That is our current status. And this, by the way, this is the Arkansas Basin. Um, right now, we are at um, eight inches in snow equivalents. Um, average snow equivalent is, uh, in, of water is 11 inches. And the drought of 2002, we were at seven inches. So we're just above um, the drought of 2002. And then you can see the uh, bottom darker red line that <coughs> is the minimum snowpack. This only provides 10% of our augmentation, though, right? Our augmentation water is about 33% of our overall water. No, I said the Arkansas River provides about 10%, as you said, before, right. of our augmentation. Right. Most of it comes from the Colorado River, you said. Well, yes. he's going to show you that probably, too. Yeah, yeah that's good. Which we'll go on to next here, the, uh, the Colorado uh, River Basin. Again, the dark blue line is where we're at now. It's no better. We are uh, at um, 11 uh, inches in snow equivalent. Um, the drought of 2002, we were at 11. Hmm. Average is 15 inches. Um, you and can average is the yellow. Which line is the average? The average is the, the, the gold line. Gold line. Right next to, I believe it's the purple right. line. Um, and then in the upper left hand corner, you can see they break it down to the actual percents of average. And right now in the Colorado River Basin, we are at 72%. Um, and again, this is on the. Both basins combined, that's one third of our overall water, our, our, and it's our augmentation water, which makes it legal for us to pump our local sources. It's the amount we put back to the stream that is consumed. Uh, moving on to uh, local conditions. This one question, Kent. Yes, sir. Uh, are we in any way influenced by the uh, the draining of the Antero Reservoir? No. Good. No, that's Denver's uh, reservoir. Um, our, our influence, there's no tie whatsoever. All right. This next graph shows uh, a couple uh, local water um, wells that we have. The, um, the trend lines show from top of casing down to water level. Um, as you can see, a slight decrease in water levels over the years. This is from January 2010 to current. Um, the, the dashed red line is historical lows since we've been monitoring water levels. Um, that historical low is um, actually the historical low for the Lucky Lady 3, which is the green line. Um, not all the wells have that historical low. For example, the uh, blue line, oh, I'm sorry, the yellow line is another monitoring hole. Um, that, the historical low on that is around 28 feet from top of casing to water level, and uh, that has um, also dropped below the historical low. So you, there's a decrease in local water levels, but at the same time, when, when I say there's the water level is at um, 30 feet, these wells are very deep, and um, it's just a small window within the well. There's, um, every well's different, obviously, but on average, you, <coughs> could, you, could, you could say there's 60 to 70 feet of water still in the well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me just ask, because when you say they're very deep, when you say that, I think of wells that are a lot deeper than these. Okay. Um, how deep, approximately how deep are these wells? They range from 100 feet to 140 feet. Yeah. That's not very deep. No. Okay. Go ahead, Gary. That's our normal water supply? This is our local water supply. Local water supply, which provides what percentage of our total? 66, two-thirds percent okay. of our water. Kip, is there any correlation at all in the aquifers that these wells draw from and snowpack in the, the other sources of water? Uh, these are just local um, conditions. I don't r track the South Platte Basin because that's high country snowpacks. This is just local. Um, all, but, you know, when we do get snow or precipitation locally, we see it in the water levels. I, I, I think one thing I would yeah. note is we have an alluvial 
I mean, this is an alluvial aquifer. It's not a, uh, uh, a deep aquifer like the Denver mm -hmm. Basin and those types of things. So, um, you know, this gets recharged fairly quickly if we have moisture. And we have a fairly large basin that, you know, that, that collects. So, um, you know, if precipitation picks up, we're going to see these. And if you watch through the spring and the summer, uh, you, the, the water level always comes up because that's when we get our moisture. moisture. Okay. And that's what you kind of see there is reflected is, is as we've gotten moisture, mm -hmm. it's, it's not like a, a deep aquifer where it takes so many years for the water to get down there. This actually, ref, you know, the, a change here locally in our weather can be reflected pretty quickly in our wells. Just over the last week with the warmer temperatures, we saw about a foot increase in water levels, just with the snow that we had is melting. Um, next, I uh, just wanted to go over what a level one water restriction means. Um, that is uh, limiting outdoor watering to water customers three days a week. Um, even number addresses, Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. Odd number addresses, Monday, Thursday, and Sunday. Um, May through September, no watering between noon and 6. October th through April, you can water any time of the day, just as long as it's above 32 degrees, obviously. And um, there is a um, <clears throat> number two, uh, sports, public sports, sports fields, excuse me, can be watered uh, four days a week, and those days can be determined by the operator. Um, trees, flowers, shrubs may be hand watered conserv conservatively any day of the week. As long as it's not, um, as long as number four winds, no watering when winds are over 10 miles an hour or they abide by the time. <coughs> well, how do you enforce this? <coughs> there, the, we do our, our do best to notify people as best as we can. It's mainly a volunteer thing, basically. You're just informing people we'd like you to do these things. What I can tell you historically is that the community has, uh, understood the concern with watering restrictions and it's almost self-policing uh, we have neighbors who will talk to neighbors uh, over the years i can recall perhaps three or four folks that we've had to visit and we try to do it in an educational way there's a chance that despite the multimedia ways people can get information <laughs> they may not have heard this so it's not our intent to to cause them consternation the intent is to conserve water and so we'll knock on a door our field service folks our police department our streets folks will knock on doors and say hey, help us out help yourselves out so it really doesn't become a huge enforcement issue plus also remember we have a tiered uh, rate structure so the more water people use the more they pay for it sure. so there it's it's somewhat like I said self-policing Our, our recommendation is to go to uh, level one water restrictions effective March 27th, 2013. And um, we expect to even go to level two in one month. And as you're, before you move into your deliberations, it, someone made the statement that we don't, this is not intended to, to scare people into thinking we don't have water. For 2013, we have plenty of water. And as we do our conservation measures, we'll be okay into the future. But we want to make sure of that. And that's why we're implementing level one now, is to get people in the mindset of conserving water. And we fully expect, as Keith <coughs> said, to come back in a month and institute level two, which tightens it up just a bit more. Well, but we've got plenty of water for 2013. And as we watch the weather, we'll make adjustments as we can. So when you send the water bill out, I guess there's a statement then there saying that we're on level one. Yes, so that. What that means. Um, I don't know if there's enough space on the water bill, but we do acknowledge level one restrictions and then I think send them to our website to get details. Exactly. It'll be advertised on the digital displays around town on our website, Facebook. Um, Facebook. What's the uh, trigger for level two? Um, there's really not a trigger. It's, we just look at our water supply every day and um, try to maximize how much water we have in storage to carry us through future years. Um, local conditions could trigger it sooner or later. And the Utilities Advisory Committee, you know, that's again, that's part of what they do in that monthly review. These guys are reviewing it 
more regular. And just for everybody to know, I think we've said it, but you know, Eric and I both are on the Utilities Advisory Committee, so that's the reason we're maybe a little more attuned to, to some of the water issues than, than, than others. Um, we, have, we have set certain parameters. You asked for triggers. Um, I couldn't give you a specific trigger um, because there's so many variables that come into play. Ultimately, we bring the recommendation to you. We, we watch these variables, and as the trends look one way or the other, uh, that's when we'll bring a recommendation to you. If we see consumption is higher and uh, rainfall is lowering, we'll make that recommendation to you. It's just our expectation, based on the long-term forecast that we're seeing today, that we'll bring back the level two to you in a month. We don't know that for sure, but that's our expectation based on the patterns that we're seeing now. And time of the year affects water usage. And so that's, you know, that's a part of it. It comes now. It's reason, going back to your question, John, you know, about Antero, that's the reason you're hearing all this going on. That's Denver water, um, Colorado Springs water is going through, uh, Colorado Springs utilities, similar issues right now because we're getting into that season when people start using water for outdoor things. And that's, during the winter, you could put this in effect and it wouldn't have had much of an impact, if, if yeah. any. But, but it's the changes that you make for when people start doing the summer usage. Could you pace your decision on empirical data? I mean, you know where the reservoirs are falling and raising. And what John says, well, where's the trigger point? And that can be based really on empirical data based on what you have. You know, if it falls, if our uh, augmentation supplies and our regular supplies fall below a certain level, it would trigger a level two. Hell, yes. I mean, I, I don't want people to get the assumption you're pulling this out of your rear end, you know. We're going to level two. We please, please speak into the microphone, Gary, when you're talking. When, when you say to our total water in, so, in storage. No, I'm just um, saying there's got to be a trigger point, like John mentions. It's based on empirical data, whether you have, you know, you have a certain amount of supply in your normal supply and a certain amount available to you in your augmented supply. You know, there should be a figure there that says, hey, if we drop below that point, we got we got to trigger in level two or something like that. There, there, that's true. However, local conditions could be raining in the portion of that augmentation water that we have to use is our outdoor water consumption and that's where augmentation water comes in but it could be raining locally where we're not having to water yards outside and use that water we're not trying to minimize your point about trigger points but there are probably four or five variables that are considered that's what the graphs that Kip showed you that's what we look at we look at all of those together so there's before we well, uh, well, I mean, I can see your point, but having been on the water utilities for quite a while, it's, it's a little more art in some of this. That it's not just science, that, you be, that it's all just a formula and you plug in numbers, but there's a lot of things when you're looking at trends and all of those things. And so the question becomes, do you need to have it in a calculus model or what they, we've been doing for years and, and served our community well um, with our water? I think, I think what we're doing and what uh, the previous utility directors and what staff has done has uh, served our community well. And I think, uh, and, and everybody's a little different where you want to draw lines. Uh, you probably even sense that. I'm probably a little more conservative when I talk about water than, than some others. And, uh, but it's how we get together and come up with uh, conclusions on where we need to go. Yes, Carol. Um. Kip, I, I noticed in here that this uh, restriction would only occur for spray irrigation systems and hoses with sprinklers. Would it not uh, apply to drip irrigation systems? No, ma'am. Uh, for the record, what what is the um, actual amount of uh, real estate that can be irrigated in the city limits? We have uh, uh, restrictions for yards at 2,500 square feet. Turf. But that's only New Yards. Only New Yards right. that does only not. New Yards with, with irrigation systems, and that went into effect in, uh, I want to say, 2006 or Something so. Like that. <clears throat> now, now, is the 2,500, that, that's yard, that's grass. Yes. Bluegrass, so that doesn't include shrubs and right. all that sort of thing. So. Right. It, it seems rather insignificant, actually, when you, you think about the number of folks within the city limits who have irrigated grass, um, how much of an impact would a level one restriction have? 
Um, right now, people aren't watering outside because it's still there. Those people who have spray <coughs> irrigation systems, um, it's not safe to turn them back on because we still get those low temperatures. Um, however, there is, a, 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 I believe, a lot of people who water with hoses, and it's the, the that outdoor consumption that really um, draws from our augmentation water. So if you just limit the outdoor use in those areas, that's where we save. And I mean, Woodland Park is very conservatively using water already, so to be able to cut a, a big number isn't realistic. Um, I couldn't give you an actual number of how much per household we could cut, um, but um, it is every every little bit counts. And not having the figures in front of us, or you might, but I'm just remembering when we looked at when we had the drought, like 2002 and things, and we went on water restrictions and really changed the public. There was a pretty big drop in water consumption, as I re remember from the graphs, due to putting in the restrictions, these restrictions, and how people responded to it. Is that, without getting into specifics, is that kind of a, a good generalization? Gen yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. And one more question. Do you know if uh, Colorado Springs has um, uh, enacted restrictions yet? I've been told April 1st level two restrictions will be in active. And that's comparable to our tiered levels? Our level two is exactly the same as their level two. Okay, thank you. It basically level two moves it to two days a week instead of three days a week. Okay. Outdoor water. Um, the, the, the thing I would like to mention is it's not just this year. Last year was a dry year as well. So it's back-to-back -back dry years. In, in wet years, we save as much water as we can to carry us through these dry years. And we just want to preserve what we have now for the next years. Any additional discussion from council? Any more questions for Kip? Thanks, Kip. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. You got it. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the uh, implementation of the uh, city's water uh, city's level one watering restrictions. Uh, any additional discussion? Hearing none, we will take a vote, Cindy. Thank you. Harvey? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Smith? Yes. Turley? Yes. Rovetto? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, public comment on items on the agenda. I don't have any. Um, I don't have anyone signed up to speak. Is anyone who's here tonight would like to uh, speak on any <laughs> subject? Hearing none, then we will move on to reports. I have a few items to uh, go over tonight. Let me give you first um, upcoming events. Um, on Monday, March the 25th, from 5 to 6 p.m. here in City Hall uh, will be a, a town hall meeting with uh, Teller County Sheriff Mike Ensminger, and um, that's going to be a meet and greet with him and just discussions of things going on in the county. And again, that's Monday, March the 25th at 5 o'clock right here. I will also tell you he's going to be having a number of these over the next um, eight months uh, through November. He's going to be holding these down at the Pikes Peak Heritage Center in Cripple Creek, also at the City Hall in Victor. And then there's also, I'll just, we'll bring it up later on, but there's one Monday, March the 25th, another one on Monday, June the 24th, and another one on Monday, November the 25th. So um, with all the things that are going on in legislature and, and uh, so many of those kind of issues, of course, remembering that um, the Tower County Sheriff, um, for example, he's our incident commander in events such as the, uh, for emergency situations such as the uh, Waldo Canyon fire we were dealing with last year. So working with him and, and his input and his staff is very important. On a Thursday, April the 4th, is the Chamber Lunch and Learn, Navigating Alzheimer's Disease. And for more information on that, contact the Chamber. And um, we have Easter coming up, and I'd like to wish everyone a happy Easter. Um, also, just another reminder for Council about the CML Conference coming up in June. Uh, a great opportunity to uh, meet other council members from across the state, exchange ideas, and all of the many training sessions that occur. So um, I encourage you for that. I've received a number we have, not me. Well, actually, I got a few of them. But uh, some thank you notes. Uh, we got one from the Woodland Park Wind Symphony. 
um, for the su uh, support to the uh, with the community investment fund and it's great to receive those thank you notes we also got one from the uh, junior woodland players and they actually sent us a very nice picture framed of their from their events and um, so that'll be laying here on the, on the dais if you want to take a look at that when we get done but really very nice and you know how i am it's great seeing the the young folks doing things and moving on from that I have another thank you note from um, the community cupboard for community investment. And John, you know, we all appreciate the work you do on community investment with uh, um, being on that and serving. And it's, it's we, just, have, we have a lot of good help. We do. Yes. And also from uh, Prospect Home Care, I mean, uh, Home Care and Hospice, and the Youth Pass Symphony Guild. And, uh, oh, no, that's a different one. I mean, that's something I'm invited to. Um, I'll just won't read through these, but I just want to give you a rough idea. I think I mentioned a month ago at council that I had gone to uh, Columbine Elementary School and read to uh, first graders and kindergarten kids um, two hours on a Wednesday and two hours on a Friday and um, also visited with some fifth graders. And I'm not going to go through all these because, but you know, being mayor, you don't get paid any money, same with city council. And so what we do, our work is for, you know, it's, it's just sometimes the recognition of what we do. And these kids are great. So from the kindergarten kids at Columbine Elementary, I got all these thank you notes. And they are so, they are just great. Some of the kids, and I will show those, drew pictures of me and them with the mayor. And then the little things like, I like Mayor Turley. Uh, would you be sure that that gets in the press, <laughs> that the kids like Mayor Turley? Um, you know. Um, and the book I read was called The Big Fuzzy. So a lot of these have, it's a polar bear. So a lot of these have to do with that. But I would encourage in the community for, for people on council and things, it's, it's really amazing to go spend some time with these kids. And, I know David's gone over. And then um, those were from the kindergarten, so they're nice and colorful. Um, these were from the first graders. <laughs> and those are really nice. It's, I'll just, Dear Mayor Turley, thank you for coming to read to us. We like Big Fuzzy, your friend. <laughs> and, um, and then from the um, fifth graders that I visited, um, a couple of them are kind of funny. Um, I'll just quote this one. Thank you for being nice and not at all like a businessman. <laughs> so I guess they thought I would come and be an old stuff shirt, and, and uh, it was it was just it was just it's just amusing that. You, but these fifth grade these are really, I mean I just got to tell you will really well written, um, good penmanship good grammar, um, pr pretty impressive. And um, they thought it was interesting that mayors don't get paid, or at least this mayor. And uh, also one commented, we were talking about, well, how does the city, you know, these little kids asking how the city runs. And I said, well, you know, when your parents get paid, a, a little bit of their money gets taken out as taxes and, and goes to pay to do things like utilities and uh, police and protection and plowing. We, we, this the night before, we'd had the snowfall, so the crews had been out plowing. And so I asked them, well, how do you think, you know, the streets get plowed? How does that happen? And so it was really good. But the one kid actually picked up on that. I was also, it was also very interesting to learn that a tiny bit of our parents' paycheck goes to the city. <laughs> so, and, and I just think we have an opportunity to really influence these kids in a positive way and I'm tickled that I've been able to do that and it, it is one of the fun things to go to and with that I will shut up and um, I will go on to Eric I don't know how I could follow up with anything so <laughs> I, I have nothing anything that could beat that Gary Gary David are you going to bring up donkey basketball 
Oh, oh that's a good. I'd be happy to. <laughs> And during this discussion, when David called me and asked me if I'd play, I told him I wouldn't be a councilman anymore. And he says, no, you're, April, that's you're wrong. Of April. He told me I was wrong. Sure. And unfortunately for our staff, as council and you, Mayor, you guys are stuck with me till June. I know. <laughs> and we love it. I'm wondering if any of those kids have ever met any other mayors. Oh, I'm, I'm, I know Steve has gone over and done some of this before. And, um, no, not them kindergarten kids. They just didn't have a chance to compare you to anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, not met. Those kids hadn't met one before. Anyway, that was all I had, and David will talk about yeah. Donkey Ball. Carol? Um, a couple of week, weeks ago on a Friday afternoon, I met with uh, <laughs> Chief Larson and Sergeant Jim Halloran. This is uh, following our... Um, a community forum on uh, the after action report for the Waldo Canyon fire and I'd had some questions about our emergency action plan and uh, uh, Ch uh, Sergeant Halloran and the chief uh, shared the action plan that we have now uh, with me and um, I, I offered to share it with some of the other uh, response personnel that I work with in my civilian job and uh, I, I'm happy to say that our emergency action plan is based on, on sound guidance from FEMA it's it's a uh, got some good bones. Um, my main concern when I, I met with the chief and Sergeant Halloran was that our emergency action plan is not posted on our website. Um, so I've, I've had a couple folks look at the plan, uh, made some suggestions about how we could tighten it up and, and recommended those sections that would be best posted on our website and I, in the next couple of weeks I'll share that with you and Sergeant <coughs> Halloran. But uh, Sergeant Halloran has done a great job with our emergency action plan. And he runs that program so Very thanks good. chief thanks for your time thank you for your help John I'm a little confused mr. mayor uh, when you were reading to the kids were they calling you big fuzzy <laughs> or was that a no, bear you said but, but they didn't call me big fuzzy <laughs> well I shouldn't say that <laughs> but but I was reading about a big bear and, and then we did get into a discussion about how I'm often called a bear. And it was funny as I would ask them, so why do you think I would be called a bear? And, you know, the kids, they're like, you know, they, you know what's going through their minds. But, but they were really, really respectful, and they didn't want to say it. So then I said, okay, tell me really what it is. And they said, you look like a big bear. <laughs> so it, it's just... So, and I will tell you, there's other things. If you're really, if council's interested, um, I'm um, in May. I'm helping with junior achievement in a day. They're going to be doing that at. at um, it's where you go for the whole day, and instead of it drawing out over a number of weeks, and they will do, be doing that in, in all three of the elementary schools in RE2. Um, only one of the schools matched up with my schedule. Um, if you're interested, would you? Uh, I can send that to David, and David yeah. could forward that on to council members. It's a great experience to do junior achievement, and um, and then there's a, for example, science fair going on um, at Columbine Elementary, and they they need judges. I'm going to do that one day. Um, the uh, I just got an email from the principal at, at Gateway. I haven't looked at it yet. I just came this evening with additional things going on. I'm just trying to work as much of that into my schedule as I can because I just think it's really good for kids early on to learn as much as they can about city government and that we're people that are accessible and that we're just people, that are, we're citizens that are serving their community. And so I think the more we can do that, the better. And, and that just happens to be, you know, something that's of interest to me and I love doing. So um, I'll send that to David and maybe somebody else can help. Okay. David? I okay. have a, uh, a brief confidential memorandum I'll distribute to council for closing meetings. Okay. Thanks, Erin. I have a, a question, though, Erin. Um, I'm not even sure how to phrase it, but uh, based on uh, the newly passed legislation for gun control, what is the impact for home rule cities uh, and, and the new law? And I'd be happy to prepare a report for you and provide that. Okay. Um, Thank you. Or at least a memorandum. Okay, yeah. thank you. 
probably would want to word that very specifically, right? It's, yeah, it's, you know, it's, I, I think that it's just now mm -hmm. being looked at by um, Eddie Escobar. And <coughs> that issue is just now being looked at by the municipal, municipal bar and a number of municipal attorneys. So I think that there are still, um, the, uh, the analysis is still being done. Okay, thank you. Now, David. Thank you for Councilman Harrison's uh, request. The Lions Club has hosted a donkey basketball tournament for the last two years, so they're in the third year. Uh, the city has a team, and Councilman Harrison will be playing in his third year, and I'll be playing in my third year, and then we have many younger people who are much more flexible and actually bounce when they hit the floor instead of just crash, because you do fall off a lot. Uh, but it's Saturday, April 27th. It's at the high school gym. It really is a lot of fun. It's a fundraiser for the Lions Club, and um, you, sh you should come out and support that. That's the only report I have. Brian, would you uh, come to the podium, and let's hear your monthly update, please, sir. Mayor and Council, good evening. In the spirit of the evening, I'll be brief. Four items, really. Uh, at the last DDA meeting, an agreement for disposition and development was approved and executed for lot number two, Woodland Station, uh, with Woodland Park Beer Garden LLC. I think most of you know with uh, Arden Weatherford. Um, <clears throat> we've had a lot of questions about Family Dollar when they're going to be opening. Uh, the signs are up on the building, if you've noticed and driven by. Um, it's really a corporate decision when they're going to be opening. We anticipate within the next two weeks that'll happen. Uh, they usually have three or four stores in the region that they try to open simultaneously, so uh, we're anticipating a, an opening here any time now, so we'll look forward to that. Uh, Woodland Hardware, uh, if, if you've driven by, is progressing with footers and foundations, anticipating steel structure in the coming weeks. Uh, again, moving forward towards an opening date uh, anticipated before the end of the year, uh, and we continue to communicate with uh, both Doug Page and Kelly Radarmo in terms of progress, uh, not only regarding Woodland hardware, but also the, uh, you know, the DDA improvements that are being undertaken there. And then finally, I'd like to hand to you today, we finished our DDA work program, uh, one in four year goals and action items uh, for your review. And, and please, if you have any questions or comments, uh, want to sit and visit about those. It is the work program for the next 12 months and also projecting uh, work program items over the next four years. I've spoken with several of you uh, that are involved in some of our committees already. We have five committees uh, that, we'll, that we'll work with. We usually have no more. We, we, we're not allowed to have more than two DDA members, and we will invite citizens on those, on those committees as well. So um, we look forward to working through the various items that you see. And again, if you have any comments or questions, we would be glad uh, to sit down and go through those. And I know we'll be working with, with many of you as we, as we work through the next year. Mayor, those, that's the end of my comments. If there are any questions, I'll hand these out okay. to council. And um, I'll just, uh, one comment on, um, Brian and I are meeting every month, Brian wearing his DDA hat, and um, I, I really appreciate that, and you know, it's, 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 it's good to have good communications going on. And we'll meet, you know, we meet other times as needed. Um, the, uh, when Brian was talking about the Lot 2 contract that he signed, it's very complex, and I'm, we spent some time together this week. I'm trying to still wrap my arms around all that and understand it and understand all the, uh, you know, it, it's, it's pretty complicated, and I'll just for now state that I'm trying to get my arms wrapped around that whole thing. Brian, is it possible to get a copy of the agreement for Lot 2? Absolutely. It's, it's a matter of public record. Can and it, has, it is executed, as I mentioned. Can you send that to I, me? I sure can. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. And that's all we have tonight. Okay, and I will make two other um, comments. Um, this morning, um, David Buttery and a number of um, residents in Woodland, or business and other folks in Woodland Park, attended the um, Boy Scout, the Pikes Peak Council uh, breakfast. I would say about 300 people or so there. Um, at the Antlers at 7 a.m. this morning, and uh, it was very good, uh, very good affair. Um, we had a table of 10 that was hosted by Tony Perry, <coughs> Park State Bank, and um, just it was really a great event. And for me, I'll just add that 
It was interesting. They showed a video of kids, a, a young man on his video games and, and how once he got involved with scouts and got his Eagle Scout. And when he turned around and looked at the cameras, he got his Eagle Scouts. It was one of the young men that was in my boy's state city, my citizenship program last summer. So that was kind of interesting to see that. And then the Quito speaker was General Ed Eberhardt, a Lieutenant General retired. And uh, I know him quite well from uh, working with him at Peterson for a number of years. So that was uh, a pr pretty neat uh, day. So uh, I'll also make a comment uh, that um, last Friday night was the chamber annual banquet, uh, well attended, well received. And uh, thanks, Debbie, I think that went really well. And uh, I think everybody had a good time. And I'll just, I mean, a lot of good things about it. The scholarship winners I thought were exceptional. So I was, you know, it was, it was, that was pretty nice. And that was one from uh, Cripple Creek Victor and one from Woodland Park. So good job. Meeting adjourned.